Hello, now I'm going to talk about uh, what are the strategies that you follow to identify which are the test cases that you want to pick to um, test a, a, an element, which really call it a unit under test, which can be a method, a class, a package, okay? So basically you, follow two you can follow two different approaches and these two different approaches depend on what you know about the um, what you know about the unit under test. Either one you know the, it's a specification, so you don't look inside, you look at it as a black box, you don't know what is implemented, and basically the, the only thing you know is that what is the behavior given the inputs to it. Okay? And eventually you also know about his internal state. You, you know about in which state can be the, the, the unit under test, but you don't know how it is implemented. Other way to define the, to identify the test cases is by knowing okay, the internal implementation. So how is the code implemented? And actually from this it results that you get different type of test cases. Okay? So let's start with um, when you think in terms of uh, a specification. So when you think in terms of a specification, what you have, you have uh, this black box and you know the behavior given the inputs and the probable states that the unit under test can be. Okay? So a very simple way to look at it is to pick a, an, a, a, a class okay, that you know, the stack, an, um, an abstract data type that you know, which is the stack, and then you have an operation pop, and you know the, the semantics of the pop, okay? So you say, what is the behavior of pop when you invoke it uh, in a stack? And you know that it removes an element from the stack, okay? But even this, the specification can be tricky, because then you can say, well, but what is the behavior when the stack is empty? And this can be specified or not. In some cases, you just specify it. You say, well, the behavior is that if it is, if the um, the stack is empty, you just when you do pop, it just um, doesn't change the stack, and maybe you get an error, or it can say nothing. So in this case, you don't is is not specified. But what is relevant here is that from these you can think about what which are the test cases, okay. And if you think a little bit about that, you, you have, well, you have one test case that we have several elements in the stack, and when you invoke the operation pop, you get the same stack with less one element, which was the last one that was added to the stack. Okay? And the second test case you may think that may be relevant to, to test is basically, well, when the test has the one element, to check that if it is null, uh, if it is empty, okay? And then you may think in terms of what happens when you do a pop in, a, in an empty stack. You have two approaches. If it is already specified, you just say, okay, let's, let's specify it, and it's another test case, okay, let's just see what happens when you do it and check if you get this error. If it is not specified, you may say, okay, I don't care. I don't care about the implementation. It's not specified. The developers weren't going to use it, should be careful, and should not invoke it when it is empty. Or if you try to be a bit more uh, demanding on the quality, and uh, what you can do is that you even test that condition to say that uh, uh, to, to, to check what happens, and in some, say, in some sense you are enforcing that it should be really specified. So it's interesting because sometimes you may use testing even to uh, revise, review, and um, uh, uh, enhance the specification. Okay? This is called black box testing. Okay? But actually, if I know how the pop operation is implemented, suppose that you know that the stack is implemented by ordered set of arrays and you have 1,000 elements in each. Which are the test cases? In that case, maybe you, you're going to think, well, 
should be interesting to test it in the situation where I have uh, 1001 elements and then I just do a pop to see what happens. Why? Because you, you realize that if the code is implemented this way, there's a possibility that there's a bug in that, in, the, in that part of the code. Okay? Because you, maybe you need to, to have a, a list of arrays or you need to have some implementation. So what do you conclude from here? You conclude that by looking at the implementation no, or knowing about the implementation, you come out with a different set of uh, test cases. Okay? So, the question here is either you test against a design or you test against an implementation. And when you test against uh, an implementation or even by knowing the, the, the implementation, you are doing uh, uh, white box testing. As always, the borders, the frontiers are a bit, uh, are not very crispy. Okay, because look, Sometimes you start doing black box testing, you don't know about the implementation, but by observing some results, you start guessing about the implementation, which is interesting because actually is, is like discovering how it is implementing outside by stimulating the unit under test and observing and then, and, and then realizing that, well, and so in some sense, what uh, a software engineer or a tester does is probably mix both, okay? But the, the big question is what is going to be the amount of effort that is going to spend testing it such that is a good relation cost-benefit? And that is about coverage, which I will address next. Thank you.